Fridays at the stick. From who's got it better than us to brick by brick. It's always the 49ers way from off season to game day. Yeah, we talk back. It's the 49ers cut back. It's 49ers Cutback Podcast time. Welcome to the show. I am to talk about a, a very impressive cornerback, Deshaun Jameson. He's getting a lot of people's attention. He was flying around at minicamp, and everyone has been talking about the fact that this, that uh, Deshaun Jameson could make an impact during training camp and potentially push for a roster spot. I've even heard some content creators say that he would make the roster. I don't know if that's the case. That's what we're going to work out during this episode. But he is definitely electric on the field. And that comes from a variety of different ways. First off, at the cornerback position, boy, is he fun to watch. He gets sticks his head in there. He makes tackles. Uh, he's also pretty good in coverage. He can give up some separation at times. But you can definitely see why people are excited about Jamison. To me, Jamison is a fun guy, but let's go over a little bit of the particulars. He goes close to five foot ten. He's 186 pounds, so he's a little bit on the smaller side. His arm length is smaller uh, than Sam Womack, and we know Womack having those 31 inch arms allows him to play on the outside, and that's where Jamison is trying to play. So a little bit more undersized than Womack as far as comparison, yet a little bit bigger than Quantrez Knight, and Quantrez Knight is a nickel corner. Just trying to figure out exactly where Jamison would play within the 49ers defense. I believe he's trying to translate to the outside, but I think his body might be more natural to play on the inside. He's a guy that's pretty good at sticking to receivers. Occasionally, he does let his eyes drift and he can lose separation. And normally, he was able to use his speed to make up for that separation. The question mark is, how fast is he actually? He ran a 4 5 40 and that really does show up on film. I think a lot of people see him do his kick returns and believe he's a lot faster than he is because you put a ball in his hand and he looks tremendously faster than he does when he's in coverage. So how fast is he? I believe the 4-5-1 is legit, which means he's going to have to make up for that lack of speed on the outside with very good technique. He's going to have to make sure his hands are on point. He's going to have to make sure his feet are where they're supposed to be. He needs to mirror wide receivers and make sure he's in the right spot. He's got to get in and out of his break at a high level to be able to compete with some of the top elite receivers in the NFL. I think he's one of those guys that's very scrappy. He goes out there, he competes at a high level. He gives every single ounce of effort he has to it. He also is a, a, a guy that studies. He has to because he has to make up for lack of size or lack of speed with some know-how of what the offense is planning to do. He's a guy that was pretty productive. He had two interceptions in his senior season at Texas. Uh, and that is you know, a really nice stat to have because the 49ers want players that are going to cause turnovers. We've seen the wave happen. Uh, when Robert Sala was the defensive coordinator, there just wasn't very many turnovers. Last year, there was a safety turnover as far as players, and all of a sudden, that's what happened. Tashawn Gibson, uh, Talano Fonga were making plays at a high level, but it didn't just stop there. Newcomer Diameter Lenore, and I say new into the starting lineup, started making plays. Tarverius Ward had interceptions, picked up fumbles. It was like a movement, and Jamison's one of those guys that flashes, and he's a, definitely a player that can compete and make plays a lot of plays for a football team where it gets tough for him is the tremendous amount of young talent that's ahead. We talked about Charverius Ward, who's a top 10 cornerback in this league. Diomar Lenore, who ascended to a player to watch on the way up. The way he played in the playoffs was absolutely fantastic. You throw in the fact he's really good at tackling and playing against the run. And you've got two solid corners. Then the Fort Nairs went out and got Isaiah Oliver, who is one of the better corners in the league against the run and has outside corner potential while being six foot tall. Uh, a nickel at six foot tall trans 
translates very well to what the 49ers want to do with Steve Wilkes, plus the blitzing ability. So right away, there's already three guys ahead. And then they went out and they drafted Darrell Luter Jr. They still have Ambry Thomas. Uh, there's a lot of talent, not to mention the one we were comparing him to earlier in Sam Womack. So tremendous amounts of talent ahead. So what does Jamison do to make this football team? Well, first off, he needs to do what he did at minicamp and fly all around. Players like Quantrez Knight did that last season. I was there every day for training camp and watched Quantrez Knight compete at a high level and make plays day in and day out. He stole the show when they practiced against Minnesota last year in 2022. So that's exactly what Jamison has to do to get on the radar. Because it's not just getting on the radar to make the 53-man roster, but potentially securing a practice squad spot. That is not ultimately given to you. You have to earn it. And the 49ers like to have cornerback depth on their 16-man 16 16-man practice squad. You want to know who I think is going to make the practice squad? I just put a video out over on Patreon. You can go check that out if you would like to. But Deshaun Jameson does have one key factor that will help him make an NFL roster. Could it be the 49ers? Potentially. And that is a return guy. That speed that he shows when he has the football in his hands is definitely more than a 4-5. Of course, the 4-5 is, is definitely good enough, and we've seen guys like Debo Samuel who are really close to a 4-5, but when he has the ball in his hands, can pull away from everyone. And I think Jamison's kind of in that category. So he's a guy that can help on special teams. The problem is the 49ers have a legit position player that is a punt and kick returner for the team in Ray Ray McLeod. In fact, they drafted a wide receiver that can handle those duties as well in Ronnie Bell. So Jameson has to go out there and prove not only that he can play the position, but then is all world as special teams. Special teams will definitely help him in some areas, but it's not going to be the end all. Brian Snyder's not going to go to Kyle Shannon and say, hey, we need to keep this guy as our best returner because Kyle Shannon has already said positional value will outweigh what they do on special teams. Now, if, if it coincides, if you have the decision between two guys and one's good at special teams and one's not, you go with the one that is. Look at last year at the running back position with Jordan Mason and TDP. They went Jordan Mason on the active uh, game day rosters and TDP was left off being inactive because of special teams prowess. So Jamison's going to have to impress in that area, but that's not how he makes the football team. The way he makes the football team is by showing his positional value. He's got to compete in every aspect of the game. He's got to prove that five foot 10 is not too short to play on the outside. And he's going to get his opportunity going to get some of the better wide receivers in the entire league. What will he do when he's matched up on the outside with a Chris Conley or a player like Brandon Ayuk who uh, is making everyone look foolish right now? How he's able to play them is going to be very important. We want to see him in man. We want to see how his eyes are in zone. You can't have dirty eyes. You can't be looking off somewhere else. Sometimes when he was running with wide receivers on his film, I would see him drift away. Those receivers would start to get separation because he would lose contact with where those players were. Anytime you have to stop looking back and turn your head and run full speed to catch up to a wide receiver, that's not a good sign. You must make sure you stay in their hip pocket. That is something that I think he needs to work on consistently. Also, there are times in his zone he will also drift out of his normal zone area. Do not do that in the NFL. These quarterbacks can take care of and handle those areas of zone. They'll throw into tighter windows. In college, you can get away with it. You can drift a little bit, still be able to come back and make a play, or it will just discourage a quarterback from even making the throw. But in the NFL, that's not the case. They'll throw it in there, and that little window will turn into a big play because that receiver's able to get enough room to take off and run. So I think there are some things to work on, but we got to like his moxie. And we got to like the fact he goes out and competes. This is a guy on film that sticks his head in there. He makes tackles. He's not afraid of contact. He's got a little swag to him. He's definitely a player to watch in training camp because he competes. He's going to be competing with guys like Quantrez Knight. And guess what? Quantrez Knight competes at a high level. I want to see what happens at the beginning of training camp when Quantrez Knight is out there and he's getting his workout in. 
Is a Sean Jameson out there working too? Is he going to outwork Quantrez Knight? Because that's what he has to do to potentially even get on the practice squad. Is he going to go outwork Ambry Thomas? Is he going to go outwork a Darrell Luter Jr.? That's what he has to do. And when he has his opportunities to get his hands on the football, he must make a play. Now, his mirroring and the way he has fluid hips are really good. He can mirror wide receivers on their routes. He's pretty good at driving on the football. So when that receiver's making that cut, he and he's a little bit off. He can drive on that football, get there in time, and make a play. He has good timing. He has good fluid hips, which means I believe he can develop those techniques we are talking about, about not losing ground and separation between him and a wide receiver. It's definitely possible. He's got necessary abilities to be able to compete and play the NFL level. The question is, will he have the opportunity to do so? Got to prove it in practice, and then you've got to prove it in the preseason. And with all the talent ahead, there's not going to be that many opportunities to do so. You have to go take it, and you got to go make it happen. Does he have the skill set to do so? Absolutely. The fun player to watch. I'm looking forward to seeing him play not just cornerback, but also doing some special teams in the return area too. I wonder if they'll give him a shot at playing Gunner as well. Danny Gray last year made a name for himself with the way he was able to fly downfield. And I think this guy could do the same thing. So will Deshaun Jameson make this roster? I think it's going to be very tough for him. I don't know if he's going to ultimately have that opportunity. He's able to translate what he did at minicamp to training camp. Then he has a real shot. But I don't think it's a shoe in When you're talking about what happens at minicamp, you're talking about a very structured system where they're working on install. Uh, these are all the basic plays. These are the basic coverages. And that's why you hear about certain quarterbacks doing well one day and then they struggle the next day. Because one day is made for the offense to be more successful. The next, the D, as they're working through these plays and working on putting in their system. So, yes, he had a great day. But it's all about consistency, and it's all about stacking those days. And if he can stack those days during training camp, then I think he'll have an opportunity to make this team. Would I bet on him making the team? No. I think the likelihood is he's competing for a practice squad spot. But I do like the player, and you never know. You're an injury away from getting your opportunity to go make something happen. Yamanur Lenore did it last year. Maybe Deshaun Jameson is the next guy to make something happen when the opportunity comes his way. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. Like the video if you could. It does a lot to help out the channel. Subscribe if you haven't already on the push for 4K. Getting really close now. Very excited about it. And I'm curious what you think of Deshaun Jameson. Do you think he has a legit chance to make this roster? Or do you believe, like me, he's more of an outside guy who's probably going to be closer to the practice squad? Let me know in the comment section down below. And also, wanted to tell everyone more content will be coming your way here in the near future. Still got more players to go over and also their impact and how they'll be used within this 49ers team. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Can't wait until the next one. But until then, stay safe and remember the right way is always the 49ers way.